Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the playthrough of The Letter with hopefully what is the true ending. I have taken off all the voices and since this is a visual novel and I want to be a voice actor, we are going to read it like we were a novel, providing voices for the different characters. Although I will warn you, my men voices are probably not very manly. But without further ado, let us begin. Also, I must warn everyone that there is violence in this game. There's some horror scenes. It's kind of creepy, but it's also a novel. Um, so, let's begin. I unlocked the chicken. The Ermagard Mansion. It was built for Lord William and Lady Elizabeth Ermagard of Luxbourne, humble ambassadors of peace and beloved by their people. Both were well known for their compassion and generosity, never failing to extend a helping hand to anyone in need. Under their influence and wealth, what was once a small, sleepy village grew to a prosperous and bustling town. However, the seasons of joy eventually ended when the good nobles perished at the hands of a great plague. Their riches and legacy were henceforth passed on to their only child, Lady Charlotte Ermengarde. The mansion has stood since the 1620s, a witness to a very long history of joy and pain. After Lady Charlotte committed suicide, the great house was eventually left uninhabited. <laughs> And that is when it began. Surrounding villagers spoke of seeing and hearing unearthly things, of cries and howls that filled the nights and hearsay of a mysterious woman roaming the hollowed house aimlessly. People who dared enter its walls were simply never heard from again. Even after 400 years, these stories remain much like the house itself. Whispers about the once great house, its legend, and its curse still fall upon the villagers' ears. In spite of this, the current owners are convinced that these stories are nothing more than a hoax. With little regard for the truth, they had Briar Realty Corporation place the property back on sale. Like Pandora's box, the secrets that lie inside await to be discovered by brave souls. No matter what happens, take care not to be consumed by the curse. Dot, dot, dot. Good luck. Isabella. Hello? Isabella, are you there? Where are you? A familiar jittery voice comes from the other end. Oh, hey, Rose. I'm at St. Goretti High. What's the matter? What do you mean, what's the matter? It's the mansion, silly. I'm here and you're late. Cheese, we're on shift together, you promised. Oh my god, please don't tell me you forgot. You were planning on leaving me to check this place out on my own, weren't you? You chickened out. Calm down. You know I take my promises seriously. I'd like to believe that, so hurry up and get here. A bit too quiet since no one's lived here since, like, forever, but beautiful nonetheless. Why are you so surprised? This isn't the first time you've been there. I know, I just wish I could live in a place like this. It really takes my breath away. Yeah, well, I wouldn't be so sure about that. Not after the rumors that say it's haunted. Jeez, never mind those rumors. Ghosts aren't real after all. And even if they were, which they're not... They can't do anything. They're nothing but spirits. You don't know that. They might be listening or watching right now, and they might not be too happy with you. Enough to curse you. No offense, sweetie. That's a bit of a stretch. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's better to be careful. Right. You know, not every property we sell will end up being with, end up with a dead body stuffed on the sofa. And I think that mansion is where we're likely to find another one. I can feel it. That was one time, Isabella. Loosen up. 
Anyways, just get here ASAP, please. I'm bored being here on my own. Fine, fine. Let me just finish up here. I'll be right there soon. Okay, see you. Bye. She hangs up before I can res before I can respond. Rose, still charming as ever. Who was that? I look up from my phone to see Rebecca. Rebecca, giving me a questioning look. Oh, that? It's just Rose. Rose? The one you said who trained you for your job back when you started? You're working together again? Just for this property, we've been scoping out that big mansion down at Inson Village for after the renovations. Today's sort of its grand opening to the public. BRC wants to give it one last check before we let potential buyers tour it this afternoon. Wait, mansion? That big spooky one you've been telling everyone about? Didn't you say how it gave you the creeps? You actually went there, and you're going back. Well, I did promise Rose I wouldn't ditch her. And besides, a job's a job. Gotta do what you gotta do to make a living. <laughs> As soon as those words leave my mouth, Becca lets out a soft chuckle. What's so funny? Nothing. It's just, I didn't expect you to say that coming from you. It sounds so out of character. I mean, no offense, but you've been freaking out about the place being creepy ever since you got assigned to it. Curse rumors and all. I honestly thought you'd back out. Not all the time. I could really use a huge amount of cash right now, and this is just the fastest way to get it. Plus. Listen to this. Briar Realty wants it sold as soon as possible, and the agent who lends the deal is going to get a huge bonus. They never get bonuses like that. Getting that would make life so much easier. They're desperate. I'm desperate. It's perfect. A sympathetic look crosses her face. You know, if you're really in urgent need of money, you could have just asked me. Oh, Ashton. We can always let you borrow and you can pay us back whenever. I have to keep myself from groaning out loud. In the years I've known her, I can only tell what to expect when she has that expression. Becca. I've noticed that you've been living off instant noodles these past few weeks. She crosses her arm and grimaces at the thought. Her voice slightly rises as she begins to scold me. Instantly, I'm reminded why Becca excels at teaching boisterous teenagers. Stop eating junk. They're cheap, but not good for you. You'll definitely end up at the hospital if you keep at it. Here we go again. I eat other things, too. I fold my arms across my chest, moving her posture and giving her the best frown I can muster. The same one I'd use with my younger siblings when they're being difficult. Instead, she only raises an eyebrow at me. That's not going to work on me, and I saw it when you were cleaning your flat last week. The instant noodle cups outnumber everything else. You're just exaggerating. Did you even see what's in my cupboard yet? I'm not just living on instant noodles alone. I've got canned beans, peas, tuna, ham, and even hamburgers in there. Becca's wrinkling her nose by the time I get to the end of the small list. She even went a little green on the last one. I would have laughed a little at that if I didn't know it only me to lead to more reprimands from her. Aren't those the same ones you won from the grocery raffle more than a year ago? I sincerely hope you're checking the date stamps on those before eating them. I don't want to repeat last year. In any case, those are still not exactly healthier choices, though. She shakes her head, possibly laughing at some funny distant memory. When she looks up, I immediately brace myself. More words from her. Sometimes it's better to just let Becca talk until she runs out of things to say. But, when she turns her attention back to me, there is only warmth in her smile. What am I going to do with you? She says this more to herself than me, her voice shifting to something kinder, even motherly, if I'm looking for the exact word. I hope you know it's a not... It's impossible not to worry about you when you like this. You don't have to keep eating the same thing. I already told you before, you're always free to reheat the food in my fridge. 
Thanks, Becca. I really appreciate it, but you don't need to keep babying me. You've been taking care of me ever since I moved here. I have to take a break sometime. And before you ask again, no. You know I'm not a fan of borrowing money. And I'm not going to ask you to give me what you earned hard for yourself. <laughs> you and your pride. Be but suit yourself. The office stays on the table, though. I nod in response, if only to get her to drop the topic. But I'm pretty certain I will never take that offer. Ever. It has nothing to do with pride. I've simply seen plenty of times how friendships can take a worse turn for the worse just because of a few unpaid debts. I don't want something like that to happen between me and Becca. We may argue a lot about small petty things, but she already feels like a real sister to me. I don't want to lose that friendship over something so trivial. Becca's movements, when she takes a quick glance at something behind me, snaps me out of my thoughts. Well, enough to chat. Lunch is ending and my students will be back any minute. We can catch up later. Good luck with your clients. You better treat us to lunch or something if you get that sale. You bet! With a smile smile, she returns to the desk and begins shifting through the pages of a rather thick history book. She's probably working on next week's lesson plan. Or trying, at least. Her eyes are distant, and she doesn't seem too attentive to whatever is on the page. <coughs> As if she heard my thoughts, Becca starts coughing heavily. Her hand hastily goes to her mouth to stifle the sounds. Ah, uh, this is precisely why I followed her here. For someone who makes a habit out of worrying other people, Becca sure forgets to how to take care of herself. Hey, you sure you can manage on your own? I mean, you're still a bit feverish. Oh, hush, dear. Don't you worry about me. I'll just drink some medicine and I'll be right as rain. I leave level her with a flat look. She's had a cold for a couple of days now. Something about the strange weather not agreeing with her lately. And despite my advice to take the week off and rest, I found her apartment empty when I dropped by this morning. She even left the medicine her doctor prescribed. Look who's being stubborn now. You shouldn't even be working right now. Seriously, you big baby, I'll be fine. For now, just go to work and stop making that rose girl wait for you. I'll call you if I still feel bad, and you can come pick me up if it makes you feel any better. She offers me a reassuring smile, and I can always sigh. Why do I even bother? There is no stopping her once she decided on something. Defeated, I reach into my bag to pull up the same bottle of medicine she left earlier. She looks at it warily when I place it in front of her. Unfortunately for her, this is the one thing I'm not letting her have her way. All right, but don't forget what the doctor said. Drink this on time. I'll see you later, okay? There's an amused gleam in her eyes when she shifts them back to me. Look who's playing mother hen now. Rebecca! Okay, okay, I won't tease anymore. I'll make sure to drink it, Mom. Before I can retort, she casts another look at the clock. I take that as a sign to finally end the conversation on my short visit. With a small wave, I leave her alone in the classroom and her thoughts. I hail a passing taxi to take me to the property as soon as I leave the school to grounds. The mansion is some ways out in the country, but I don't have trouble giving the driver directions. Apparently, everyone in Luxor knows of it, including every bit of rumor surrounding that place. In fact, just the mention of its name is enough for locals to give you cautious sideband glances. I learned that the hard way the first time I commuted there. Not only boosted my belief that there's something more to the house. Even the news of it being renovated and placed back up in the market has caused quite a stir. Thankfully, it died down a few weeks later. The place would have been a, come a lot harder to sell otherwise. I avert my eyes from the window once the buildings shrink in the distance. We get a glimpse of the country sign soon, although a quick glance at my watch tells me we're still a few minutes away from our destination.
Might as well get some work done. Rose did ask me to review the mansion's documents. I already looked them over last night, but you never know when things may go wrong. My phone has ways of messing up like that. Halfway through reading the papers, my phone rings again. I pick it up without looking, neatly tucking it between my ear and shoulder. It's probably just Rose again anyway. Rose? Guess again! That voice. Ah, uh, Bingo! Hey, what's up? Just checking if you're still cool later this evening. You mean that thing with Sack? Yeah. He even called in the middle of the night just to remind me. No, don't worry. I didn't forget. I'll be there. Cool. I'll see you later. What time do you get off? Like I said, I'm not good with men voices. Around 5? 6 p.m.? I don't know. It's the first day of the Ermagard Mansion open house, and we're expecting quite a number of potential buyers. I'll be booked the whole afternoon. Ermagard Mansion? You know, the big Jacobian mansion at Anselm Village. I'm on my way there right now, actually. On your own? Yeah. Well, Rose is already there, but yeah. I see. Looks like the scaredy cat finally toughened up. Shut up! Has chuckles, and I can't help but roll my eyes upon hearing it. I'll see you later. Drop me a call when you're done. I'll see if I can pick you up. Whatever! Bye! Stupid asshole. Always teasing me whenever he sees a chance. I'll show him who's tough. It takes a few more minutes until I finally reach the infamous mansion. I have to admit, the entire property does look wonderful from the outside. And yet, despite all this, it does nothing to hide that something is just wrong. The surrounding area is unusually silent, and only the rustling of leaves can be heard as the occasional breeze passes. While Ainsland Village is just a few miles away, everybody keeps their distance on purpose. Perhaps out of fear, the horror of falling under the mansion's curse. Somehow it makes me feel sad. The lack of immediate human presence just makes this place all the more eerie than it has any right to be. If it's uncanny in broad daylight, I can't imagine how this place looks at night. Are you planning to go inside that place, Missy? The voice nearly makes me jump out of my skin. Without completely taking my eyes away from the house, I give the driver a confused nod. Beat passes while I wait for him to say more, but... His only answer is a non-committal hum. Relatedly, it occurs to me that he must have been waiting for my payment. I mentally slap myself for spacing out and promptly hand him the fare with an apologetic look. I expected him to leave as soon as I paid, but there's a hesitant expression on him, as if something hasn't been said yet. Is there something wrong? Look, Missy, I'm sure you heard what the people are telling about that place. Nobody likes to be disturbed when they're at peace, and I'm pretty sure whatever they say is in that house, they don't want to either. I admit they did a good job fixing it up, but there must have been a reason why even distant relatives of the family who used to own the house never lived in there despite inheriting it. No wonder they wanted to get rid of it. Maybe they just didn't like it? You never know. He drives off after, but what he said... Left a foreboding feeling in my gut. <sighs> I breathe out a heavy sigh as I approach the house. Ooh, after hearing enough of the rumors, I should have expected the conversation to take that turn. But I'm already here. Backing out is completely out of the question. It's not like I have a choice anyway. If I want to get that bonus and commission one way or another, I've got to sell this property. The door is ajar when I get to it, however, while my own copy of the keys dangle uselessly in my hand. Rose must have left it open when she arrived. That's weird. We may be the only people here this early, but I've never known her to be someone so careless. Entering what greets me inside leaves me gaping. They've cleaned every corner, waxed the floor, dusted the antique, searched every nook, cranny, and crevice, and made it stick and span. All for the sake of making the mansion more enticing to the modern-day lords and ladies. But, 
No matter how hard they try, the mansion still looks as soulless as ever. As though it's going to eat you alive. If you ask me, they should have just listened to what other people are telling them and leave this place alone. Some things in the world are better left alone, never to be disturbed ever again. Rose! I call out. Rose, I'm here! Where are you? My voice echoes softly throughout the hallways. Oh, who am I kidding? In a place this big, I don't think she'll hear me no matter how deafening this silence is. She could be all the way on the other side of the property for all I know. Quickly, I reach for my phone and dial her number, but... The number you have dialed has not been recognized. Please check and try again. What do you mean has not been recognized? We were just talking a while ago. It's not like she was eaten by the house, right? Or, or maybe the ghost did hear us talking and speared her away. Right? Right? No, Isabella, don't be ridiculous. She probably just wandered deeper into the house and lost signal or something. I dial her number again, hoping the call will connect this time. The number you have dialed has not been recognized. Please check and try again. Oh, to no avail. Oh boy, I have a very bad feeling about this. Rose, if you can hear me, please come out. Come on, Rose, this isn't funny. You know this place gives me the creeps. No answer. Oh, this isn't going to work. This place is big. She could be anywhere. Okay, I need to start looking for her. Oh, I take a deep breath before venturing deeper into the mansion. Taking a couple of steps forward, I notice something move above the grand staircase. What the hell? Rose? Rose, is that you? Not funny! I'm leaving you if you don't come out! Not coming out, huh? Fine, I'm going! Okay, that's a lie. She's my friend. I can't really leave until I know she's alright. Going desperate, I try to contact her number again. Come on, please give me something. Please, Lord. <laughs> Finally! Hello? Hello? Rose, I'm here at the mansion. Where the hell are you? She doesn't respond. There's also a heavy start coming from her side. I sincerely hope it doesn't cut off again before I can get an answer from her. Rose, come on. Where are you? A few moments pass until the static eventually starts to quiet down. I'm... What? The attic? Why? Crap. Got cut off. And do I really need to go there? How oh, deep inside this bench of the attic is there's barely any signal there. No wonder I can't contact her. But why is she there? Out of all the places, she just has to make me go fetch her in the creepiest room out of this place. Is she going doing this to get back at me for being late? <sighs> Whatever. Just go. The sooner I meet up with her, the sooner I feel better about being here. I carefully make my way up the staircase. My legs wobble as I mentally curse the fact that I've chosen real estate instead of picking a career that doesn't involve strange, abandoned houses. Upon reaching the top, the grand hallway greets me. It branches out to two major wings of the mansion, the east and the west wing. There are two attics here, one on each side, but the east one has been converted to storage room of sorts and somehow I find it the least likely for Rose to wander there by herself. Besides, she never did like going into stuffy storage rooms. So I head towards the west wing for which a simple wooden door at the end of the hall opens into a small room. Inside is another stair set of stairs leading to the attic. Unlike the grand staircase, though, the stairs to the attic are steep and narrow, made of old stones and covered with thick coated dust that kicks up into the air with every step. Thank God it's still daytime. If it wasn't for the lights streaming through the door, I might easily stumble and fall. With how old this place is, there are no light fixtures to illuminate the cramped passage up. Why they didn't bother to add one here when they renovated escapes me. Shh. They did that with the rest of the house. A small bedroom welcomes me at the end. 
It looks exactly as it did like the last time I've been here, full of dust, worn out, and faded by time. Odd, I thought they cleaned everything. Did the crew miss this room? Ugh, calmness is the least of my concerns right now. The more pressing matter is Rose. She's not here. Was I dreaming when I talked to her a while ago? Did I mishear her? What? No, no, it couldn't have been a dream. After all, the creepy ambience of this state is doing a remarkable job of making sure I stay alert and awake. And I'm sure she said she's here. Is this a prank? Or maybe that phone call was Rose's last message to me before the curse got to her. Oh, shut up, Brain! You're not helping! Don't make this scarier than it already is. But if she's not here, then where is she? <laughs> what was that? That's it. I can't, I can't do this anymore. I'm leaving. I, we must have angered the spirits living here. I knew disturbing this magic was a bad idea right from the very start. But nobody listened. Be fucking realistic, they said. They think I'm cuckoo because I believe in ghosts and stuff like that. Me and my outlandish backwater country beliefs. I always strive to be a model employee, but not this time, no. I'm turning back for the sake of my sanity. If I realty can find another agent who is more fucking realistic to tour people around this haunted house. <sighs> Before leaving, I take one last look at the gloomy old room. Just to check. Huh? What's this? My worries about Rose's whereabouts must have caused me to miss this when I first entered the room, but there's clearly something on the floor. It looks like... a letter? Lying on the ground just a couple inches away from my feet, out of sheer curiosity I lean down and pick it up. Strange. I don't recall seeing this last time I was here. A few days back, me and a few other agents inspected the mansion for today, but... I had been the last to look in the attic and leave, and this certainly hadn't been here before. Someone must have left it in the room since then. Did Rose leave this for me? Was she here a while ago? I couldn't have missed her, though, could I? There's only one set of stairs leading to the attic. The letter isn't exactly in pristine condition. In fact, it looks rather ancient. The paper is so thin and rough, I'm worried it'll fall apart if I so much as touch it. But with great care, I open it, and what I read shakes me to my core. What? what? Oh my god. Nothing but the words help me fills the page, all of it seemingly written with a crimson shaded pen. Oh my god. <clears throat> the same phrase just goes on and on until... Sent this to five people, or else? Or else what? Or else what? As quickly as I can, I scan to the back of the paper to peek, peek into the envelope to make sure I'm not missing out on the second page, but there's nothing. No. Oh, please, no. My hands tremble as dread creeps over me. The room is suddenly getting colder. I need to get out of here. Folding the paper in half the sight that greets me next has me frozen on the spot. A pair of blood-soaked feet enter the night vision covered in gaping wounds with skin eaten away to reveal flesh thrown in all matters of things one isn't meant to see. It's too much. All of it is too much. I want to cry, call for help, but the words catch in my throat. Even my feet won't move. Completely paralyzed out of terror. Lord. Please help me. She shut my eyes tight. Oh, mothering fervent prayers under my breath. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Prayers taught to me as a child by mom and papa slip out endlessly through my teeth. Because God, oh God, if I have you have to listen to any of my prayers, please listen to this one. And if God doesn't listen, at least I won't see the thing that kills me. A cold comfort. I wait. And I wait some more. And when nothing happens, I dare to take a peek. Only to find that the ghost, the thing, whatever it is, gone. 
me flushes over me as I shakily get up to my feet and back away towards the door. Wrenching it open, I slip out without a second thought and make a run for it, down the stairs and onto the hallway. <sighs> I take a look back to make sure it isn't behind me. Any other person may have stopped just as soon as trick like and over imagination, but I I'm not taking any chances. I am not giving that thing another chance to catch me off guard. <sighs> I don't think I'll feel safe until I get out of here. Whatever that thing is, every warning bell in my mind is telling me to that it's going to jump out any moment and get me while I'm still in this place. I told them. I freaking told them. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Racing down the stairs, a breathy lasso escapes me. <laughs> and my shoe slips and I find myself falling until my back hits the ground and pain rakes my body. My head grows fuzzy and my vision dims as I fight to stay conscious. Go away. The last thing I see are those feet before all I know is darkness. Boom, boom, boom. Alright, we're going to skip that because it's being weird. A buzz breaks the silence, and I start to rouse, pulled into consciousness against my own will. Oh, I've never felt this tired before. I just want to sleep, but the insistent buzzing, poking, and prodding isn't letting me. Oh, my old mattress may have been not the comfiest places, but that doesn't make me any more eager to wake up. Isabella! Five more minutes, Becca. I swat away, but nudging persistent at my side. Come on! Can't I just get a few extra minutes of sleep today? I promise I'll work hard once I'm up. My hand lightly taps my cheek and something cold is being pressed against the back of my head. The icy sensation so loose the, spreads through the area, giving me an uncomfortable feeling. Oh dear, is she all right? Isabella? Isabella, gosh, can you hear me? Isabella? <laughs> oh, God. The fog immediately lifts my mind the moment I recognize the voice and my eyes snap open. There looking down at me is Rose. Another woman mo noiters behind her, but my attention is too focused on my co-agent to even ask why there's someone else with her. Rose's posture just screams worry, although she's keeping a straight face or trying to at least. I can't help but feel bad for making her fret. A wave of dizziness washes over me once I try to get up, forcing me to lie back down again. Oh, luckily the feeling subsides after a few seconds, only a mild throbbing somewhere in the back of my head remains. With a little assistance from Rose, I push myself upright. She hands me an ice pack and gestures for me to press it where I suspect a small bump has already formed. If the light ache in the area indicates anything. All right, Isabella, where are we? The Ermagard Mansion? Why? Ouch! My head. And the date today? October 21st? Rose? Last one. Can you count to 15 in reverse order? 15, 14, 13, 12, 15. No, that's wrong. Why are we doing this? She's just checking if your injury is any way serious. This time I curiously guard the woman standing beside Rose. It's impossible to overlook her with the way she towers over us. And here I thought Rose is already tall. Who is she anyways? One of the remaining cleaning crews? Oh, but with how primly dressed she is, I don't think anyone will want to clean in this suit. An expensive suit is that. The gloves alone must already cost a fortune. Her eyes slowly shift between me and Rose, considering us with an almost unreadable expression, before finally fixing a sharp gaze on me. I can't help but fold my arms protectively over me myself as she does so. She may be far from a cleaning crew, but she certainly looks like our supervisor during evaluation. Just do it, please. I eye them both warily, but recite everything as she asked. Oh, Rose, really, this is a breath of relief once I'm done. You scared me for a moment there. It was that call for an ambulance. Are you all right? Exasperation soon replaces the dull ache. The memory's a little fuzzy, but the attic? There... There was someone, Rose. In the attic. So 
someone. You mean a client? Oh, that's unlikely. It's probably just one of those cleaning crews. The boss sent a few of them back this morning for some last minute. No, no. Not any of those there. Oh, I'm not actually sure. Wait. Did I call you? You said you were in the attic when you answered. That's why I went there in the first place. Both Rose and the lady look at me like I've grown into their head. Did I say something weird? Rose quickly casts an apologetic smile at the woman before the awkward silence stretches on further. It's her saleswoman smile, the one she taught me back when I was still her trainee. I should show this to trouble some clients or just to avoid trouble in general, she advised. It's all still the same one she gives me when I've done something particularly absurd that may cause us to lose a sale. Her eyes are serious when she turns back to me. She takes both of my shoulders, gently squeezes it, and with as much patience as she can muster. As much as I'd love to have gotten at least a heads up of your arrival, I didn't really get a call from you. You know the singer is here is absolutely horrendous. I was in the garden early and I couldn't even make a single call. It's Bella. I'm going to ask again. Are you really alright? What happened? I, I don't know. It's all a bit blurry. I remember I was looking for you, but you weren't in the attic and, and there's... Oh, whatever it is. Then I must have tripped on a rug or something on the way down. Oh no, oh no. Do you think someone came in while you were out? You left the main door open. We are going to get in such big trouble if something gets stolen, Rose. Perhaps it is a concussion. Are you sure you feel fine? We could call an ambulance. I could cover for you. No, I'm fine. Okay, Rose, I can work. Wait, wait, wait. Hold your horses, Rose. I can't just miss an important sale because of a minor bump in the head. An extremely minor bump. I've had a worse one. I was a kid. This is nothing. Besides, if I leave, you'll have to shoulder everything in the open house alone. And then imagine this big. Well, there's also the part where I may lose that bonus BRC problem, but that's completely beside the point. <sighs> Rose gives me a skeptical look when I return the cold compass to her, and she pushed myself up the floor. I have to use the staircase's railings to steady myself, but otherwise I feel fine. See? I'm A-OK. -okay. The two of them exchange a worried glance, and Rose assumes I contemplate a look. I <laughs> bite my own look in anticipation if she says no. All right, you win. Oh, smile threatens to slip out of me. But if I see that you aren't feeling well, I'm taking you personally to the nearest clinic to have you checked. Clear? Clear as day, ma'am. Thanks, Rose. You insisted, but remember what I said. First sign of you looking not okay and wear off no questions asked. It's just a small bump. Don't worry. You shouldn't downplay these kinds of things. It could be a serious injury for all we know. <clears throat> <clears throat> Suddenly a small cough sounds against the walls of the foyer interrupting our banter. The woman is looking expectantly at the two of us, her stare making me shrink back a little on myself. She isn't really intimidating. Well, she is. But not in a scary negative way. Far from it. Her actually, her demeanor simply commands an air of sophistication and respect. In a different world, younger than a younger me would have probably wished to be like her. <clears throat> at our lack of a response, she coughs again, lifting a well-trimmed eyebrow at me in question. Words get caught in my throat at the sight of it, and Rose, usual, is swift to catch my blunders. My sincerest apologies, Miss Miss McCullough, Marianne McCullough. She hands Rose her business card. The words interior designer catch my eye before my partner flips it over. Oh, probably someone interested in the mansion for 17th century influence then. I won't hold it against her, though. Despite the hearsays and remaining uninhabitants for years, the mansion's original fittings and furniture have been completely intact and restored to pristine condition. I suppose some people find that trip to a past feeling appealing. After all, with what it offers, the place could be a haven for people looking to live somewhere with a classic historical charm. Miss Vakula, I'm Rose Cooper, and this is my partner, Isabella Santos. We're just ironing up a few things, and we'll be starting the tour soon enough. 
In the meantime, we've prepared some French friends for you and Father while you're waiting, if you could please. Thanks, there'll be no need for it, though. I just dropped by for a quick survey of the place. I thought I should check on the estate before I meet with the homeowners. Rose's confusion is impossible to miss when she glances at me, and I return it with an equally perplexed look. And against my better judgment, I blur out the first question that comes to mind. I'm sorry, homeowners? I should have kept my mouth shut. A flash of irritation crosses her face, but it instantly disappears under a mask of professional detachment. Yes, sir. Hannah Wright, I was hired by her to handle the interior design for their newly bought home. This is the Amagol Mansion, right? It is, but... She pauses, possibly trying to find the right words to fix the awkward situation without offending someone. Someone goes nudging me with her elbow. We'll check with our superior. Those few moments have given me enough time to clear my head of any nervousness or confusion clouding it. It is, ma'am, but we're, we're aware the mansion has already been sold. What do you mean? I must flinch when she turns her gaze on me, but I stand my ground. Besides, it isn't like I haven't dealt with an awkward situation like this before. I may screw up at times, but that doesn't mean I haven't learned a thing or two in the five years I've worked in the business. The mansion is indeed for sale, ma'am. Today's the hope enough house, in fact. However, we haven't heard anything from the higher-ups that a deal has already been closed up for this particular property. If, if you'd like, my co-agent and me can check with them right now. She nods, seemingly deep in thought after I've finished. She appears to be a reasonable per per person anyway. Given the proper explanation, she'd surely understand. I thought something of God when I arrived here. Excuse me, I think I need to make a call to my secretary. Thank you for your assistance, Miss Santos. With a slight wave of her hand, she leaves us. Oh, that seems to be the end of it. Both Rose and I breathe a sigh of relief. Disaster averted. I also don't miss the thumbs up she gives me for doing a good job, and I can't help but swell with pride. Still, I've already prepared myself to dial the number to our Luxborn office and check, even if she didn't ask for it. I will be very frustrated if, for some reason, something has already been decided without my or Rose's knowledge. It's the whole new level on unfair. We've been working hard on this. Moments later, Miss McCullough returns, looking a little frustrated, but with an apology clear on her face. I feel a little sorry for her having to go through all this. There seems to be a little misunderstanding with my client. If you'll allow it, I'd like to stay and wait for them here. I was informed that they drove up and arrived for the open house today. I figured it'd be a way to just leave after that long drive. I might as well meet him here. Certainly, you can stay in our hall in the meantime, ma'am. I'm sure it won't be long before our guests arrive. And Isabella, I left a few documents in my car. You know where I keep those. Could you please get it for me? Rose takes a glance at her this watch before tossing me a set of keys. And hurry, we still got a few minutes to double check those papers. Okay, got it. The two of them disappear behind the parlor's door. Their departure brings with a stillness to keep me company, neither welcoming nor comforting. Alone, like this. Whew, it's impossible to think, to not think of what really happened. Oh, I wish the memory isn't elusive as it normally is. Then again, Rose already said she didn't receive any call from me. Is it just paranoia? A temporary lapse after having heard all those tales about this place? Probably. Oh, I really want to think of it as such. Better to think of it as such so I can work in peace. Except, a small part of my mind begs to differ. And if I'm going to be completely honest with myself, I want nothing more than to leave this place as soon as possible. I don't know what's in this house, and I don't want to know. The keys Rose have just handed me dig into my palm. 
its jagged edges peering, shallow ridges on my skin for how hard I'm clutching it. It's a reminder of what I still need to do and why I take this job in the first place. Hugging my blazer close to my body, I exit the house to get what Rose has already asked of me. Just a few more hours, Isabella. Sell the house. Get the money. <laughs> A flock of people have already gathered in the mansion's front yard by the time we officially open the doors. I'm not sure whether I should feel baffled or underdressed standing in their presence. Men and women of wealth and status, all dressed to the nines in fancy suits and lovely dresses of varying colors, compose the medium-sized crowd. Their necks, arms, and fingers are adorned with silver and gold, glinting in their afternoon sun. Some even have ridiculously feathered hats on their heads. I really hope there aren't any magpies living in any but nearby stores. Those birds will have a field day in this. Oh, they are murmuring among themselves, looking at the state's facade, appraising me with some arguing about whose mansion has the superior architecture. But most of it stops as Rose calls for their attention. They don't look too pleased at being ordered around, but what can they do about it? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Rose Cooper, and this is my partner, Isabella Santos. We'll be taking a tour of the mansion in two groups. Please make sure you've filled up our sign-in forms before joining a specific group. Those who want to look around the first floor, please follow my partner. I will be guiding the ones on the ground floor. Hearing this, if you wander out to me, they are mostly old ladies who seem daunted by the idea of climbing all those stairs. Miss Vakala also joins our group, but what really catches me eye is the elegantly dressed pair she approaches. It's so nice to finally meet you! When Chief Inspector Lee mentioned that a famous interior designer is down, I knew I had to get you. Your confidence, your confidence in my skills is very flattering, ma'am. I'm sure you won't disappoint, Marianne. I didn't realize that was a guy. Oh, you know each other? Not at all, ma'am. You mentioned something about a Marianne on our way here, darling. Oh, yes, I think I did. Ah, they must be the client she was talking about. I might have seen their faces somewhere before, some magazine or television. I can't quite remember. But then again, then again most of our guests have probably ended up in the news one way or another. I won't be surprised if these two already have. For people who are popular, though, they aren't dressed as loudly as the others, and in their simplicity, the couple stands out. The woman in particular is stunning enough to turn the heads of most people in my group, especially the men with wandering eyes. The guy standing beside her doesn't seem to mind, though. And if I'm going to be a bit bolder with my assumptions, I'd say he's basking in the attention. Both of them, in fact. I think they're brother and sister if it wasn't for the dark public display of affection. The matching rings on their fingers just cement the fact that they are indeed a couple. Whatever. Couple or not, what's important is... Well, the current owners can even think of canceling the list. I just hope one of the people in my or Rose's group is brave and generous enough to buy this mansion. And so, with papers in hand, I lead the way. When they aren't whispering among themselves, they're going, ooh, and ah, over one thing or another, they ask questions. From how the restoration process went, to the history of the place, I answer them all, more than happy to talk about art pieces and architecture, mostly. However, I'm careful not to mention anything about the urban legend. Not a good material for sales talk, even if the entire population of Luxburg knows about it. Some of the furniture here are actually the 17th century originals, all of which have undergone a painstakingly restoration process just to return to its original beauty. Even the glass thing, colorful ones, I don't know, but you get the idea, I hope. Especially that one, ma'am. 
It is said to be a gift commissioned by the fiancé of Lady Charlotte and Lagarde. The mansion's current owners have specifically requested that the restoration crew take great care in handling it. It's a priceless work of art and the most distinctive feature of this mansion. By the time I've stopped talking, her attention is already elsewhere. Isn't this place wonderful, darling? I told you it was not a total waste of your time. I don't know. Isn't it a bit too small? We might have to break down a wall to have more room. Well, I think it's just right. Don't you think so, Marianne? It's splendid, ma'am. Well, isn't it a little too early to make plans when no deal has been signed yet? Never mind that. It isn't going to be a problem. We've got a wonderful legal team to handle everything. Start taking notes, though. I've got a few things I want to change before we move in. The rest of their conversation gets lost in chatter of her companions. I don't want to make any assumption yet, but their sheer interest is enough to give me some semblance of hope. Oh, please, please, please let these guys be the one. Eventually, our group reaches the kitchen. Much like the rest of the house, a great deal of effort has been put into retaining the room's classical appeal. The open hearth at the end of the room in particular looks amazing, like the ones I've only seen in fairy tale books. And mad props to the cleaning crew. Seriously, after overhearing hundreds of their complaints about the soot and tires and the bricks and how much a pain in the arse cleaning this will be, still managed to pull this off. Or make it look presentable at least. The highlight of this room, however, is what's underneath this hatch here. Oh, don't say anything yet. An underground wine cellar. This is the first time the great guy in gray speaks up, Mr. Luke Wright. My memory supplies the forms they sir, signed earlier. His sudden attentiveness catches me off guard. Since the start of the tour, only his wife has shown any form of genuine interest in the place. But this time... Something lights up in his eyes at the mention of the Undercroft. What's so interesting about a basement? I really don't understand rich people sometimes. You now he just gives me the impression of a child who's seen what he absolutely wants for Christmas. I've always found it cute whenever I see a child act that way. The younger siblings especially. On a grown man? It's almost funny. <laughs> yes, sir! It could house around 7,000 to 11,000 bottles of wine. Truly? And the room? How is it built? The bricks that were used to build the cellar have been carefully picked for the purpose of maintaining and preserving a constant temperature and humidity in the room. It is a good place to keep your private collection if you have one, sir. It keeps the corks in good condition. Oh, love, did this before you wanted to make your own personal vineyard? Perhaps you could start one here. You know we're going to need space for that, darling. And this isn't big enough. If it's space you're worried about, sir, the Armagon Mansion sits on a 46-acre lot. There's plenty of room for it. We were told that the original owners had a horse stable built here before, too. There's a contemplative expression on Mr. Wright's face, but he doesn't say anything further. His wife, however, seems really pleased that he started to show interest, if only a little. I smile to myself. I may not completely understand how these people's minds work, but I sure as hell know the one how to spot a buyer with sincere interest. Score! I can't wait to tell Rose. The rest of the tour goes by without a hitch. After more than a half hour, we're able to cover almost every room in the ground floor that, and are heading to the parlor. Funny. The first time BRC had a survey of the property, I kept complaining to Rose about how big it is. Now I can't even bring myself to care no matter how much my feet hurt. Maybe this is just my excitement over a possible sale. When we reach the part of hell, there are odd feeling watches over me. It starts off as small goosebumps on my skin. The feeling of being watched and tightened. Whispers in my ear and shadows germs and lurking from the corner of my vision. Dark silhouettes that I've gone when I turn to look. Chills that has done this one. Oh, I feel sick and oh, I start to break out in a cold sweat. 
I, I, I can't do this. Let me just sit down for a moment. The old ladies in the group have been requesting for a break anyway. If, if I can just... Excuse me, everyone. We, we will be taking a 15 minute rest here before we visit the first floor. In the meantime, please help yourselves to the refreshments and snacks we've prepared. If anyone has any questions, feel free to approach me. I'd be happy to help you. I let them sit while I retreat to a quiet corner to recover. It's not what you think. Don't think about it. It's not what you think. I probably just caught Becca's cold. Don't, don't, don't think about it. I'm left alone for a good while, same words spitting out of my lips in silent hair, until a hand taps my shoulder. Hello, you there? Yes, ma'am? Oh, look at you. Having to show a group around a mansion this big must be exhausting. Not a problem, ma'am. I'm just doing my job. What a hard worker. Anyway, Isabel, right? Isabella, actually. But, yes, what can I help you with, ma'am, right? Please, just Hana. Call me Hana. I just wanted to ask, how soon are we able to move in? My brain completely stops. The sick fe feeling plague in me is gone, replaced by utter bewilderment. Is this a joke? She looks at me expectingly as I struggle to come up with an answer. Wait, ma'am, I... You see, w But we haven't even negotiated a price yet, ma'am. We haven't even finished touring the rest of the mansion. A sale would be great and all, but... She stops me from speaking any further and puts a hand on my shoulder. For a moment, with her tight smile, she looks as if she tasted a particularly sour lemon. Oh, please, sweetie, don't insult me. Money is not a problem. And just between you and me, this place is better off with us than with some old lady who'll probably just split it up with cats. I personally don't think there's anything wrong with having cats here, ma'am. Hana. I'm sure there's more than enough space here if you want pets. Perhaps I'm still not feeling very well, but really, what's wrong with cats? More importantly, why is she talking about moving in already? Well, I'm more of a dog person. But, you see, this is going to be a gift to my darling. It's going to be our anniversary soon. And it would be so wonderful if you could secure its purchase for us. Why, I can even offer something extra if you help us out with paperwork. I... we actually have a process for this, ma'am. I don't really think that would be necessary or appropriate. And just what are you two lovely ladies talking about here, leaving me and our lovely interior designers to talk here among yourselves? What would the people think, darling? Oh, it's just small talk, love. I was asking if she could help me with, um, paperwork. I try not to wince when her nails dig into my shoulder. I can't help but sit an imploring look at Miss McCullough, who just gives me a apologetic smile and a shrug. Uh, yeah, I can give you a fact sheet and a form to fill out. She wastes no time in taking papers from my hand and shuffles through the bunch. Oh man, Rose is going to be so angry at me for letting her do that. Wonderful. And Marianne, I'd really love to talk to you about those changes. You took some notes earlier, yes? I did, ma'am, but I really hope that this time... Excellent! Hopefully you can help us out too, Isabel. Isabella. Right, right, it's a lovely name, Isabel. It's Isabella. Yes, that's great. We'd be more than happy to put in a good word with your superiors, too, and... What's this? A look of confusion and disgust appears on her face. Turning to her husband, he merely shrugs in reply. 
that's a interesting work of art. Not to my taste now, I'm sorry. A darling, buttercup. Art is in a complete overstatement for this garbage. It looks like a cheap prop from a D-list horror film. Shush, love, let the girl do what she pleases with her. What should I call this? Oh, forget about it. At the very least, it's not as dreadful as that one art exhibit I was forced to attend last month. You should have seen it, Marianne. Even you would have been appalled. But I'm sure you'll know what to do with our walls once we get started. I hardly doubt it's as you say, ma'am. Nevertheless, you can be sure that my team will pick whatever suits your taste. Not on this chain that I sort, of course, it has to always work with palettes. I'm quite sure chain that as these days don't come in this form. It's my turn to be puzzled. What do I mean? Those are my double check everything. Are are the papers I handed not enough? I want to ask what I did wrong. I, I don't want to mess this up, but but the way Ma'am Hannah's leading the conversation, I'm afraid that's exactly what I'll do if I interrupt her. That's good to hear. See, darling, isn't she an absolute delight to work with? I can't wait to see how the place will look when she's done with it. You don't have to tell me that, Buttercup. A smile is back on her face when she turns to me and hands me a strange piece of paper. I would still put it away if I were you, though. Otherwise, people might get the wrong impression. Anyways, as I was saying, I, I don't hear what the rest of she says after that. I, I can only stare down at the paper at the, the letter in my hands. The sides crinkle and grip, and my breathing grows labor. It quickly fills my mind. Isabella, Isabella, are you all right? You're looking pale. I didn't even notice when Rose's root joins in the parlor. I want nothing more than to say no, no, I'm not alright. I want to leave this place. Because I remember everything as clear as day, the letter and those blood soaked leaves in the attic. It's real. The letter. I'm sorry, I didn't know. Careless. Could have been so careless. How do I even tell them that without looking like I've gone mad? Should I even tell them? I blur it out before I could think twice about what I'm going to say. Rose, we need to get out of here. This place is cursed. Rose casts a nervous glance at the people in the room. Most are still engaged in conversation with their peers, but those curious enough to turn their heads in group direction have been given her trademark saleswoman smile. The trade expression is on her face when she pulls me aside. Isabella. We've already had a conversation about this weeks ago. Those are just stories. And I'm telling you that it's not. I saw something in there. It's not... It's not human at all. I thought it was just nothing, but isn't this letter proof enough? She gently reaches out to pop the paper out of my hand. Without even taking a glance at it, she folds it back neatly. Look, I'm really getting worried about you. I know you want to see this open house through, but your condition is more important. Give me a few minutes to wrap things up here, and I'll drive you to the nearest hospital. No! No! You don't understand! There isn't a condition, Rose! No concussion at all! I'm fine! But this place isn't, and you're being stubborn about it! Before Rose could open her mouth for a retort, a hand lands on both of our shoulders, pulling the two of us a distant closer. Now, now, ladies, what seems to be the problem here? Nothing, sir. I just had to clarify a few things with my colleague. Well, it certainly seems intense. A smile fits you two better, in my opinion. Especially darling little Lily here. He gives my shoulder a gentle squeeze with the inscrutable smile spreads across his face. It's Isabella, sir. Of course, of course, but my point still stands, and with two beautiful ladies here, I'm sure. I'm sure little Lily here would certainly appreciate it if you remove your pretty hands from her, darling. The pressure on my shoulder lifts as soon as those words leave his wife's lips. 
while the scowl on her face is like a splash of cold water on me. It is also impossible to miss the displeased frown on Miss McCullough's face. The realization that we might lose a sail because of my outburst instantly dawns on me. Oh, Rose will be beyond pissed. I, I think I need to step out for a while. I'll be back. Bowing my head, I mutter a quick apology and gather my stuff to make the exit. It doesn't matter if this place is haunted or not. I've caused trouble for Rose, and I and Rose can be quite unforgiving of behavior like this. I'm almost at the door when she catches up to me. Isabella, wait. My apprehension must have been quite obvious on my face because her expression instantly shifts to something gentler. Eyes softer, a fond smile spreading on her lips. Hey, I'm not angry. I know. I'm sorry I ruined this for you. Come on. It didn't mean anything. It's not like we haven't run into problems before. If we don't get a deal today, we can always try on a different day. And look. She hesitates completely trailing off before shifting her gaze down to her hands. No small gesture to stall. Her fingers are fiddling with a piece of folded paper. It's that stupid letter again. My hands stiffen when she gives it back, but I take it nevertheless, more as an automatic response than any desire to have it back. I'll throw it away if I can, but I have this nagging feeling that one way or another, it'll find its way back to me, regardless of what I do about it. Rose, this is... You have to let them know about... I know you want to skip the sale so badly, and we've made a lot of plans on how about to go, this, to go about this. We couldn't. This is the first time I've been assigned to a property like this. I've sold plenty of houses before, but nothing like we have here. It's a beautiful house. I'd love to get one of, it, of my own if I ever knew in the lottery. But I think, look, here's the thing, Isabella. If we're going to do this, work on something, I don't know, this big, I need you in top shape, and the way you are now, my mind stops. He, what? No, I can still work. I just need to get myself together. That's what you said earlier. I let it go because I thought, hey, it's your own body, and you should know more than anyone how you feel. But after this, I... I really think you should take a break. You're... You're kicking me out? No, I'm not. Look, all I'm asking is for you to take a seat somewhere. I can see you and let me handle this for now. You're clearly not yourself and I honestly can see you sometimes not worrying about whether you're a follower or not. The day's not even over and I'm already feeling the stress. Please, humor me just this once. She clasped her hand together in front of her, eyes pleading for understanding. And I do understand. To some extent, it doesn't mean I feel any less awful. Whether at myself, at the unlucky turn this situation has taken, or for her, I don't really know. I promise I'll give you a full report of what happens after. I'll even let you take the lead tomorrow. Fine. Okay. I'll step aside for now. You're upset. A little, yeah, obviously. Against any consolation, I won't tell the boss about today. You know how he is. Please don't. I don't want to repeat the lecture I got on my first assignment. He called me a noob, and I don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> At the memory, we both burst into helpless giggles, earning us strange looks from the guests milling about the door. <sighs> Talking and laughing like this, it's easy to forget any mishaps happened. Little things you learn to appreciate, I guess. So are we good? No, I'm still not okay with it, but Rose has a point. It's better for me to step out of this one for now. I won't be able to help you anyways if I just keep getting distracted like this. Maybe I'll just take a walk outside or something while I wait for you to wrap things up. Please, just stay put, I insist. I'm not an invalid, Rose. You clearly have not seen how you look earlier. It's not that bad. Color hasn't even returned to your cheeks yet. Just stay.
stay here, all right? Don't even think of going anywhere. Let me finish what I'm doing, and then I'll take you back to Luxbourne myself to have that minor bump checked. Or at least wait for me to call someone. Go fetch you, okay? She's gone before I can place one word of complaint. And we're going to pause there for today. Thank you very much. I hope you all enjoyed the first part of Isabella.